nest. Don't shoot the nest down. You shoot my back. You shoot my goddamn ribs out. With well, fucking shotgun pussy blast, you're gonna shoot bees when you're supposed to be looking for Reggie Warren Jr. That just goes to show me once again these cops are goddamn pussies. So I sat there, squatted down in that tree. You know, I was I was in peace. You know, it was a weird feeling. I could barely breathe. Some of them were going up my nostrils. You know, I had the queen in my mouth. I couldn't breathe out of my mouth. You know, and uh, but I realized that they they're saving my life. You know, and uh, you know I knew I was gonna sit there all night long till the sun came up in the morning. I'll sit there all night long. The sun started coming up in the morning, and my body was so swollen. I mean, you gotta think, I was swollen, my muscles were fucking aching, because I had about 200 pounds of bees on me, okay? Try doing a squat for 12 hours out of the night with about 200 pounds on your back. My calves were cramping, like whenever you get a blowjob, and sometimes your fucking calf cramps right as you're about to bust, and you go, oh God, hold on a second. Uh, she's like, should I stop? You know, don't stop, keep going with my fucking calf. Don't you go damn stop my calf. And then sometimes you, you bust a nut as your calf stops cramping. That's how I felt. I gotta get the fuck out of this tree. I gotta shake these things off, and I gotta find some shelter underground. You know, there's not, that I can still see the cops. There's cops. The dogs are still out. You know, they're searching. I know I got maybe another day before they can't afford that. But I look and I'm like, well, fuck, I can't leave. I still can't swim in the pond. I look down and there's a beaver hole in the ground. So I decided this beaver hole in the ground is my next best option. You know, it, the ground's frozen, but I got my spider co knife in my pocket. So I can jump down there real quick. I can see the dogs and the cops are far enough away they wouldn't see me. And I said, just take your knife out and fucking just, you know, goddamn hammer fist that ground like Keith Hackney fucking hammer fisted Emmanuel Yarbrough's head in UFC number three in Charlotte. Once I get my shoulders through the ground, you never know how big that burrow is gonna be. I mean, it could be big as fuck. You know, beavers can chop down a fucking pine tree this big around. You don't think they can dig a little dirt? Dirt is soft as shit to them. Dirt is as soft as fucking Ken Shamrock was last time I called him out at a conference. So I'm sitting down there in the, in the hole and I hear this god awful noise coming from the corner. He's like, I'm like, is that a beaver? Is that a beaver? I'm like, fuck, man. I'm like, this thing sounds mean as fuck, you know? And he keeps attacking my steel toe boots. You know, he keeps biting them. You know, he can't go through steel. But I'm like, whatever this is, it's fucking courageous. It's got balls of steel. What the hell? What is that? That's... What the hell? He was a goddamn honey badger. He's a honey badger. He's a honey badger. Y'all ever seen a honey badger? Has anyone in this room ever seen a honey badger? Do you know what a honey badger is? Let me tell y'all something. A honey badger will eat a cobra, okay? A snake, a cobra, the most deadly venom on the fucking planet. It will die from the poison, okay? It'll wake back up and eat the rest of the cobra. Okay? <laughs> I mean, come on, y'all. That's fucking crazy. You know, you know that that's fucking badass. I mean, that motherfucker, I got mad respect for, you know? Like, that motherfucker's on my level in the animal kingdom. A honey badger don't take fucking shit. So I got a couple options now. You know, I'm not going to say I'm hungry, but I'm hungover. And I think to myself, do I want to eat this honey badger? You know, because I might need it for survival. You know, I might need some protein. And I decide against eating the honey badger because one, a beaver doesn't taste good cooked. I mean, can you imagine the goddamn raw? I mean, I can't light a fire. I'm underground. They'll see the smoke, you know? I can't. Why would I want to eat this thing? It's going to taste like shit, you know? How fucking, I can make it a few days without food. I don't give a fuck. You know, as long as I get away from the cops. And the problem I was having was every 15 minutes, this honey badger, like clockwork, was attacking my goddamn feet. I'm starting to hallucinate. I've been up for, you know, two or three days now because I was partying the night before too. I'm starting to carve my knives and this honey badger's looking at me. And I can swear he says, let me carve one. You know, I'm like, you fucking, you can't carve your goddamn little animal, man. You're a honey badger. 
So I look at him, I say, listen, man. I say, I'm going to call you Sue B. That's your name. I'm going to name you because I respect you. I'm going to call you Sue B, which is a kind of honey. I say, Sue B, you want this knife? I said, do you understand what I can do to you with this? I can fucking kill you in a second, you know? And now I'm letting them know who's boss, you know? Now I'm letting them know who's fucking boss. I take the knife and I said, let me take a fucking nap, you little goddamn fucker. Let me take a sleep. I take the knife and I throw it. I'm not throwing it at Sue B. I'm throwing it at the dirt to let them know, don't fuck with me. I close my eyes. I'm gonna try to get a little rest. Sue B starts making crazy noises again. He's fucking over there raising hell. Meanwhile, I, the only thing I got on me is a lighter. You know, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, Sue B? I'm like, calm down, please. I turn on my lighter. Sue B's attacking the knife. He's <laughs> stabbing his mouth with the knife. <laughs> There's teeth. I can see teeth falling out. There's teeth falling out all over the fucking frozen ground. This little bastard is in a one-on-one -on -one fight with a Spider Co. steel police edition knife. I woke up a few hours later. I stuck my foot out, let Sue be gnaw on it. Wasn't gnawing on shit. Committed suicide. He killed himself. I thought I gave him a knife so he could, you know, carve something. I was hallucinating because I shouldn't have been drinking in the first place. He took the fucking knife and he fucking killed himself. He committed Japanese suicide. He, he stuck the knife in his chest and did this. He committed suicide. When I finally, you know, said my prayers to Sue B, I realized what he was fighting for. My little friend Sue B was protecting what was very precious to him. Honeycomb. He had about two pounds of honeycomb he was protecting in the corner of the fucking thing. He fucking loved his goddamn honeycomb so much. He fucking loved it so much. Why did I do that? Why did I give him the knife? So I calmed down. I forgave myself for what I did to him. You know, I didn't do it on purpose. You know, it's just another mistake in my life. And I started eating that honeycomb. And let me tell you something, that honeycomb was so delicious. You know, I mean, I knew where that came from. I felt that warmth of that, of that tribe. I felt what they had to give. And now I was tasting it and I was so, I was so full. I felt like a bear. I felt like a fucking brown bear in Alaska you know, who hasn't fucking eaten a meal in a while, it's just gonna hibernate. I looked over and I realized it's really dark in here. You know, usually there's some light coming in. I said, what's that white tent coming from the hole? I got a little closer. He's a fucking blizzard. There's a goddamn blizzard that went on all night. I slept through a fucking blizzard. Hell, I knew I made it this far, it was Sunday. You know, those cops, let me tell you something. Sunday football, they're sitting around drinking Coors Light or Bud Light, you know, neither are better than Bush Light. And I knew if there was a foot of snow, those motherfuckers wouldn't be there. I knew I could just walk my ass out of there. So I stuck the stick up there, I measured it. I peeped my head out, there wasn't a soul in sight. I could only hear the truck clearing the roads. There was already a truck clearing the snow from the two-way. I crawled my ass out of there, I was cold, I was hungry because I was still in a little cut-off shirt, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've been lifting. I've been lifting heavy weights, real fucking heavy weights. I've been lifting. And uh, I pulled myself out. I looked up, saw nothing. My little buddy CB was already underground. I kicked some dirt. I filled in the hole. I walked over to that oak tree. I kissed it. I said, Mula ha ma salo kula. Kula ma la la hoja kain tong ting. Son man dang dang dong. Sang Lang Bing, Kong Xing Dang, Tong Tang. Japanese prayer I learned when I was a child to show my gratitude for these bees and what they done for me. They saved my life. 
I went ahead and walked out of the woods that day. And you're not gonna believe what was sitting between two pine trees, glistening, gold, just shiny, beautiful. My Shelby. I had the keys in my pocket. Those dumb sons of bitches. I, if I were them, I would've cut down the fucking pine trees just to tell my ass to prove a point. The fucking road was plowed for me. I went to Cracker Barrel. I sat down. I called Cindy and I said, I got a fucking story for you. I survived because the good Lord Jesus was by my side and teaching me a lesson in driving drunk. That's not a good thing to do. And he said, motherfucker, when are you ever gonna learn to stop drinking tequila? <laughs>